good afternoon, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers and 30 Minute Reviews. I'm doing both in this thing. Basically, this is a test run because I've uh, noticed that, you know, listenership is down on 30 Minute Reviews um, because of probably infrequency of posting. Also, issues with, you know, coverage, for lack of a better word. Um, so I'm thinking of folding the two podcasts into one. Uh, so I'm going to put love on both, and we're going to see which one has better listenership, um, which might be a losing battle. Now, we're here to talk about San Diego Comic-Con news, um, the news out of San Diego Comic-Con, which is ending today. Now, with all, I have a lot of coverage here. Um, I have seven pages of coverage, and of the seven pages, Marvel is the last um, page and a half. Marvel Studios specifically is, well, no, page, almost entire seventh page, which is, I believe it ends at May 7th, so that entire page, the entirety of page six, and about three quarters um, let's say let's say two thirds of, of page five is all Marvel Studios, um, but with San Diego Comic Con now back to its normal July slot, uh, back to being in person. Even if there was some hiccups with getting people verified with their COVID shot, and the thing is, I printed this out because I wanted to be able to be like like that and be like, look at how thick this fucking thing is, and then I printed it out double sided to serve paper, and it's like, well, it's still four pages of stuff. Um, but let's see what we got here. Um, but still, that's a good amount of information. And, and what I'm using is, um, I submitted this to my editor this morning. Uh, it is the weekly streaming recap that I do every week at the Town Chronicle. But this week I'm doing it San Diego Comic-Con edition uh, with all of the news and stuff that has come from San Diego Comic-Con. So the order you're reading, you're going to hear it from me here. It's the same order. It's going to be printed in that article whenever he gets back to me, if there are any edits. So, let's jump in. Um, Predator, the uh, the classic movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger from the 80s. They got another one recently with Lloyd Holbrook and a few other people in it. Um, there is an upcoming prequel spinoff called Prey that comes out on August 5th on Hulu. There's a new trailer for the movie as well. Now, the movie did open as well, with its world premiere at San Diego Comic-Con. It's not uncommon for movies like this to get their premiere at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, um, or, or other things like it. I want to say Bad Times, the El Royale opened at Welcome Stalker Con, um, and it did open to a, a standing ovation from the crowd. Now, this isn't as significant as, say, Joker or Top Gun Maverick getting a standing ovation from Con, um, where they opened, or, or I, I think it was Venice, the Venice Film Festival, which also Dune got a standing ovation, but it's still a significant kind of, um, what's it called, it's still significant that it is getting, uh, this kind of attention. Um, it is set in the, um, I think it's the 1700s, where the Predator will face off against a Comanche warrior who will presumably beat it in combat. Um, Star Wars did not have a particularly robust Comic-Con this year, probably coming off of uh, Kenobi and Star Wars Celebration. They don't tend to do that, and then they just had that, plus they have upcoming D23 and Investor Day. Um, So they didn't bring a lot to San Diego Comic-Con, but it was confirmed that Amanda Stenberg, who you may remember from a review I did a few years ago for uh, The Darkest Mind, she was the lead in that. She also played Rue in The Hunger Games. She was the lead in The Hate You Give, which I still have not watched. Um, not for any particular reason. I bought it on Black Friday. It is sitting on my shelf. I still have not watched it. Um, and she will be leading the Disney Plus show, The Acolyte. Now, The Acolyte is the only Disney Plus Star Wars show that is set during The High Republic, despite The High Republic being billed as a pan, um, a pan-media enterprise. There has really only been books so far books, comics, and, uh, that kind of stuff. There's a video game coming out, but that's really it. Um, and the show is still being written by Natasha Leone of Russian Doll on Netflix. 
Um, there was a Lucasfilm publishing panel that had some cool information. The next audio adventure, which if you if you listen to this show, you know I've, I've loved their audio adventures. Uh, previously, Kevin Scott did uh, Tempest Runner and um, Dooku Jedi Lost. It, the new one is going to be, again, set in the High Republic like Tempest Runner. And this one is going to be called The Battle of Jedi, which will presumably tell some backstory to the Jedi Temple planet where Forrest Whitaker was hanging out in Rogue One that eventually got turned to glass from orbit by, um, by the Death Star. Um, so that's something to look forward to. It will be done with a radio play with a script book released after. Um, and this time it will be George Mann writing the book, uh, writing the play, not uh, Kevin Scott. Now, George Mann may sound familiar to some people out there because he has done a lot of genre work before. He did a lot of work with Doctor Who, and he also did a lot of work with Warhammer 40K. Um, IDW is reviving the High Republic Adventures comic alongside the High Republic comic that Marvel does. Um, and and it's just, for me, I think the IDW runs have been better. Um, I really like Tales from Vader's Castle. I think the, I, the IDW runs for Star Wars have been better than the, uh, the Marvel Comics runs. Um, some previews were shown for Darth Vader, Aphra, Han, Solo, and Chewbacca, uh, Bounty Hunters, and um, Star Wars, the comics are still ongoing. Um, so those are those are all going to be continuing into 2023. Probably more information about that coming in. Um, what's it called? Coming at New York Comic Con when they do their Lucasfilm Publishing panel there. Hopefully, I will be in attendance. Moving out of Star Wars, um, this is a little bit of context news that came in in the uh, in the time before the event. Um, Disney, on Friday, added three new titles to their age-locked portion of Disney+. Plus. Now, if you recall, a few months back, after um, the Defenders left Netflix, it was like a month where they weren't anywhere, and then Disney+, Plus added them. And if you had Disney+, Plus and you signed into your account, you had to set up age guidelines for everyone on your account, um, if you were the, the primary profile. Um, which, for me, I mean, the youngest person on my Disney+, Plus account is probably my sister, who's 25, so... You know, didn't have to change anything, but, you know, if you had young people, you had to set age restrictions, and the only things that were in the age restricted portion were Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, The Defenders, and The Punisher. Now, three more movies have been added to that. Um, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and Logan, all of which are rated R, um, under Fox's X-Men universe, were all added to the service. Now, this fueled speculation going into Saturday that there was going to be some announcement regarding Deadpool 3. Um, or Hugh Jackman reprising his role as, um, as Wolverine. Um, however, no such announcements came, um, as of this point. Um, and there will be more on that when we get to the Marvel Studios part. Um, Halloween Ends released its first trailer, which I saw not in, on my phone like I did all the other trailers. This one I actually saw in the theater because they ran it for no, um, it doesn't look great, and I still stand by what I said about Halloween Kills. I feel like Halloween Kills should have ended with, um, uh, I forgot the fucking character's name. Um, it was Laurie Strode's daughter, played by Judy Greer. She should, like, they should have killed Michael Myers, and then, like, the quote-unquote spirit or the ruin or whatever bullshit they're going with now, um, should have inhabited her, the spirit of pure evil, instead of Michael Myers getting up and being stabbed, like, 80 times. Um, that should have been how that movie ended. However, we can't all get what we want in this life. And now we're getting another one. And this one is, you know, allegedly going to be the final confrontation between Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. And, you know, God willing, that will be the case. Um, Amazon Studios did have a slight showing at San Diego Comic-Con. Not a ton. They did release a new trailer for The Rings of Power, the new Lord of the Rings series. That they paid several billion dollars just to get the rights to make. Um, and then also um, renewed Wheel of Time for a third season ahead of season two's, um, you know, premiere. I think season two comes out end of this year, but they did renew it for season three, um, even before anyone has seen this, uh, a frame of season two. So that's pretty cool. Um, I do like that Amazon is committing to very expensive and, high, and big budget high fantasy. Um, I hope that it does mean that they start doing more projects besides just things that are reasonably well known. Um, 
Now, Master Universe Re Revelations did come out last year. That's the Kevin Smith-led Master Universe follow-up series um, that was initially poorly received and then eventually accepted, I guess we'll call it, by by some more right-wing aspects of the fan base. Now, at the Tadum event, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, Netflix did announce that they were going to be doing a Master of the Universe Revolutions, a sequel series to it, um, with very little information given at this point. Uh, two of these information did come out at San Diego Comic-Con, though. The first is that William Shatner will be joining the cast of, se of this season of the show, without a role disclosed. We don't know who the fuck he's playing. And then on top of that, um, in an effort to alleviate some of the, um, the crying from the man babies who got mad that He-Man wasn't in every single episode of Masters of the Universe, um, and that, uh, there may be a woman who has some autonomy in the show, um, Kevin Smith did confirm that He-Man will appear in every episode of Masters of the Universe Revolutions, so get ready for that. And by the way, a little aside, it took me until, like, this weekend to figure out that Revelations was a... Uh, with a reference to the book of Revelations in the Bible, not Revelations as in secrets will be on Earth. I don't know why it took me this long to figure that out. Uh, on to the next story. There are a few nostalgia titles announced. Um, Dynamite Comics acquired Gargoyles, the Disney animated show. They'll be doing an animated... Uh, not an animated... No, uh, Gargoyles will be a comic from, from Dynamite Comics. Boom Comics is doing a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Mighty Morphin Power Rangers crossover event. And IDW is reviving Darkwing Duck, another Disney cartoon that is getting second life in a comic form. Um, moving on to video games, there were trailers for two major pieces of IP that are coming from uh, Marvel and DC. Marvel's Midnight Suns, which is coming out in October from Fire Axis Games, received a new gameplay trailer that shows the arrival of Iron Man as a playable character, as well as how the character actually plays. This is a tactical role-playing game like XCOM with tons of playable Marvel characters. Uh, most of which are tangentially related to the occult, since we'll be facing off against Lilith, who is a descendant of the devil. Um, DC showcased some footage from Gotham Knights, their upcoming game, uh, which appears to be a follow-up of the Arkham Asylum series. This new trailer showed how Batgirl plays, considering the game is comprised of Robin, Batgirl, Nightwing, and, um, Red Hood. And the, uh... I'm not I'm not super excited about Gotham Knights, but also it has partial to do with the fact that Arkham Knights is only going to next gen. I'm not entirely on board with that decision. I feel like um, Arkham Knights definitely should uh, Gotham Knights definitely should have gone to previous gen too. But it is only available on the PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X, and PC. Meanwhile, Midnight Sun is available on every console that you can possibly acquire right now, including potentially Game Boy Color. I'm kidding about that. No, it's just PlayStation 4 or 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Switch, and um, PC. Um, Paramount Plus did bring some of their children's programming to the show. A new trailer was released for the second season of the Rugrats Revival, and they announced a massive crossover event between Camp Coral, the Patrick Star Show, and SpongeBob SquarePants. This crossover is also rumored to feature a scene in which all of the characters gather around and piss on the grave of Steven Hillenburg, who repeatedly said he did not want to do any spin off SpongeBob, and then he died, and they immediately launched two of them. Um, they also showcased the new Transformers show, Transformers Earth Spark, a new 26 episode animated show designed to bring Transformers to a new generation. I saw the trailer for it, it does look pretty cool. Uh, not something I'm probably, gonna, I'm probably gonna dive into it in a meaningful way. Um, but it does look like an interesting, uh, an interesting approach from the bring Transformers to a new generation. Um, network television had a small but important role at the, uh, at the con this year. Um, two TV shows did get some new information. Ghosts and Abbott, Element, uh, Abbott Elementary. Um, there was a panel for Ghosts, and it was confirmed that now that the bed and breakfast is open, there will be more guest stars. And next season, there will be new ghosts who are coming to the show. Abbott Elementary did not provide any new details. However, and this could not be San Diego Comic-Con related, this could have just been something that was in Variety that I read, um, and it was announced that Abbott Elementary was confirmed to get a 22-episode order for Season 2. Now, that doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, however, the issue was, up until very recently, um, that was the standard, a 22-23 episode order on a new season. Then the pandemic hit, and then the, everything changed, 
because they didn't want to order that. So the order was reduced down to 18 episodes, and then with the possibility to be expanded out to 22 later or 23 later, which is like the Goldbergs had an 18 episode order for their most recent season, then they picked it up for five more, then it got reduced for another season. It seems, I don't know if this is because they are so confident in Abbott Elementary that they want to do that, or it's because they're starting to move back into a post-pandemic um, way of doing business. I'm, I'm inclined to say it's because that the, the response to Abbott Elementary has been universally acclaimed. Um, I think that that might be it, because that is a fantastic show if you're not watching it. Um, moving on to Disney Plus, there are two new stories that came out from Disney Plus. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo apparently was on High School Musical, the musical, the series. I didn't know that until I saw this story. But she will be exiting the show after the third season, which again, did not know it was on the third season. Um, also, a trailer was released for National Treasure Edge of History, and when you go to look up the trailer, the fourth result is someone bellyaching about the new show and how it ruined uh, the... What's it called? And how it ruined uh, National Treasure. And I'm like... It's a two-minute teaser. Like, can we watch the show before we start yelling about this? And and let's not act like National Treasure is some cinematic classic. It's kind of a cult classic at this point, if it is anything. It's one of those things that like, if they made a Clockstoppers reboot, and like people were like, they ruined Clockstoppers, and it's like, well, Clockstoppers is pretty shitty out of the gate too. So, like that's the thing. It's like we look back at things from our childhood with rose-colored glasses. Um, so that that's the thing. I can't wait to see the result, the response when the when the, the first trailer comes out for the Santa Claus series. Um, so yeah, um, Harvey Keitel, uh, Harvey Keitel will be reprising his role in the sequel series, but Luke, uh, Nick Cage will not be. And Nick Cage uh, is open to it. It will be the door is always open for him to return, according to the showrunner. Um, Seth MacFarlane's Star Trek parody, The Orville, will also be making its debut on Disney Plus, which is significant because that was a Hulu show. And if you look at Disney Plus, more and more shows that were going to Hulu because they were on ABC and ABC Fan, well, Freeform, have now been slowly migrating over to Disney Plus. And Disney is facing a reckoning when it comes to Hulu, where is it worth it for them to continue to own the majority stake at Hulu, because they have to buy the rest of it by a certain date, and it's like, is it worth just selling off Hulu, if they're, if they're like, why they, like, how much of the licensing fees they're getting, and as other companies start to, you know, move their stuff away, what's the point of keeping Hulu around, um, so that is something else that's significant there, um, Keanu Reeves had a nice present this year, he had a trailer for John Wick Chapter 4, which is coming out March 24th of 2023, with Donnie Yen in a major role, and he also announced that his comic Berserker from Boom Studios will be getting an animation, an anime adaptation that got renewed for at least two seasons on Netflix. So get ready for that. In industry news that doesn't really fit anywhere else, uh, Jim Lee was asked about the movement to restore the Snyderverse, referring to allowing to allowing Zack Snyder to return to DC to make a sequel to Justice League. Uh, this comes in the wake of reporting from Rolling Stone about how he knew and wielded his power that he had uh, behind the fan base to strong arm Warner Brothers into making his uh, what's it called into making a uh, making the letting him make the movie. Um, and uh, Jim Lee responded by saying there are currently no plans to revisit the Snyderverse at this time. Uh, Jim Lee is currently the publisher and crea- chief creative officer at DC Comics. That does, that's not to say maybe Walter Hamada wants, uh, well, has a different mindset, because I think he has more say in the matter, but Jim Lee is pretty authoritative when it comes to these things, because how high up he is at DC Comics. Um, Zack Snyder responded to everything that's been going on in a very healthy way. He put a... <laughs> I, I, I can't get through this without laughing, because it's the kind of thing where it's like, he put up a, um, a picture, it's the Snyder, it's like a film reel with the with the the Justice League logo on it, with the with the Mussolini quote, like overlaid over the image, and I'm like, what the fuck? Who, who thought this was a good idea? Um, so that that that's going on. Um, Disney Plus is apparently actively attempting to acquire the streaming rights to Doctor Who from HBO Max, considering how well Disney Plus's UI is laid out. Um, and how easy it is to find things you wouldn't ordinarily find. I think that would be a better fit for Doctor Who. 
um, if they're just trying to open it up to a new audience and not just keep the same 12 fans and keep bitching about any kind of put a person of color or a woman in a leading role. Um, because I think that's the thing about HBO Max is that you need to search for things on HBO Max. If you, like, it's not designed for people to find things. Like, if Practical Jokers is on HBO Max, you gotta look for it. You gotta look for Doctor Who. Like, you gotta look for whatever it is you're trying to find. And, and you have to know it's there, otherwise you won't find it. Um, Disney Plus, on the other hand, tends to cycle their content a little bit cleaner, and they tend to showcase things a little bit easier. So that would be a nice, um, a nice fit for them, um, should that happen. Uh, and this is probably my favorite story out of the con. Um... Marvel announced a very expensive partnership with East Continental Gems. And if you have $25 million, you can buy a replica of the Infinity Gauntlet that comes with a real ruby to re signify the uh, reality gem, a real sapphire to be the space gem, a real emerald to be the time gem, a real amethyst to be the power gem, a real yellow diamond to be the mind gem, and a, and a real piece of... Spe Spesaritite, I think I'm pronouncing that right, to be the soul gem, or stones, I guess is what we'll call them, as they are in the movies. Um, it, it's just unreal. I don't know what they, th who's going to buy that, but for $25 million, you can have all of that. And I think the most valuable thing about that is the actual gems themselves, um, hoping they appreciate in value. Apple TV Plus came with two TV shows. The third, the third season and final season of Jason Momoa C received a trailer in advance of its release on August 26th. Um, and alternate... Fuck, I, I, I put a typo on this one to change that. Alternate history title for All Mankind received a renewal for its fourth season following the success of the recently released third season. That was like two months ago or a, or a month ago. Um, in comics news, Eisner Award-winning writer Tom King is going to be working with DC Comics again on a six-issue miniseries called Gotham City Year One. The series will show the fall of Gotham City to the state it is when Batman is active within the city. DC is also going to be doing another one-shot Batman and Spawn crossover comic, as well as releasing another, as well as uh, allowing Paul Dano and Matt Reeves to release a Riddler origin comic set in the world of the Batman called Riddler Year One. Um, this year also marks the official branding of DC's annual Maxi, Maxi event, which has been called Dark Crisis up until now, but is now called Dark Crisis on Infinite Herbs. Meanwhile, at Marvel, there are more details about the Dark Web event that was teased in this year's Spider-Man Venom Free Comic Book Day comic. The event will be a Spider-Man and X-Men crossover event in 2023. Chris Claremont is also going to be returning to the X-Men, having previously written landmark events for the team, including Days of Future Past and Dark Phoenix Saga. He's going to be reviving his 2001-2004 series, Extreme X-Men, which in and of itself is a continuation of his past works. And before we get to the big news from The Walking Dead, Star Trek, Marvel, and DC films, here are some quick stories. Kevin Smith screened five minutes in the forthcoming Clerks 3 which will be released at a Fathom event in select theaters and also be screened at live shows during a nationwide tour the same way Jay and Silent, Bo the Jay and Silent Bob reboot was. Rick and Morty spinoff Rick and Morty The Vindicators was released in its entirety on YouTube. AMC and Netflix released trailers for Interview with a Vampire and The Sandman, respectively. Um, the Sandman, at its panel, also screened part of Episode 3, which was described as a faithful recreation of the issue of Dream a Little Dream. Um, in advance of its August 19th release date, Dragon Ball Super Superhero got a trailer for its English dub, which will be played in theaters across the country, including IMAX screens, which is what they're really pushing for. The, the animation looks fantastic. I, I watched the trailer for that. I'm very excited for that. A full trailer was released for the new Dungeons & Dragons movie that I didn't even know was happening called D&D &D, Honor Among Thieves, featuring Chris Pine as a bard, which will be released on March 3rd of 2023. Um, I will pay to watch Chris Pine try to fuck his way out of any situation as a bard in this new D&D movie. A full trailer was released for the impending Game of Thrones spin-off show, House of the Dragon, on HBO Max. The show comes out on August 21st, and will follow the story of the Targaryen Civil War set 300 years before Game of Thrones. Previously, it was announced that there would be three Avatar The Last Airbender universe films released, and there's going to be theatrical feature-length films. Um, more detail, well, one more detail was given about the first one, um, we previously knew that Laura Montgomery, who you may know for her work on any number of fantastic shows, Scooby-Doo, there was a Scooby-Doo show, I want to say it was Mystery Inc., maybe I got the wrong one, uh, she worked on, uh, Young Justice, she worked on, like, 
Voltron, any great TV show with great animation, she has worked on. She's going to be working on Avatar The Last Airbender, the first movie, as the director. And this movie will be focusing on Aang. It was a little weird because Janet Varney came out to announce that, but whatever. Um, and in other news, animation great Craig McCracken, who you may know from any number of TV shows he made that made your childhood great. If you watch Cartoon Network, Powerpuff Girls, Fossil for Imaginary Friends, Dexter's Lab, I can go on. Is returning to Cartoon Network to lead reboots of Powerpuff Girls and Fossil Home for Imaginary Friends. So, good news all around. The Walking Dead had a pretty big panel as Walking Dead is coming to a close with season 11, uh, which will begin in October. Um, the biggest news out of it, besides the trailer for the ending of the show, was also the announcement that the trilogy of movies that they were going to do about Rick Grimes has been effectively canceled and replaced with a series that will follow Rick Grimes and Michonne. Again, I don't watch The Walking Dead, so if I'm mispronouncing uh, then that explains that. Um, I am going to eventually watch The Walking Dead. It's not, I'm, I'm not against it, but I haven't watched it yet. Um, but... That will be the new thing that will be replacing it after Walking Dead ends. Um, Andrew Lincoln and Denai Guerrero will both be reprising their roles in this new show. So if you're a Walking Dead fan, it's a great day for that. Uh, Star Trek did have a pretty sizable amount of announcements. A trailer was announced was released for season three of Star Trek Picard, which is going to showcase the which showcase the reunion of the entire crew from the Next Generation. And a new trailer was shown from the animated show Lower Decks, designed to bring Star Trek to younger fans. Uh, it was also announced that there would be a blended animation live-action crossover between Star Trek Lower Decks and Star Trek Strange New Worlds. And now we get to the big two stories, the Marvel and the DC. We're going to start with DC because DC is a lot less. Um, but DC did not come into this convention in a good situation. Let's address that right off the bat. Um, they've been having severe trouble with the Flash movie because Ezra Miller is currently in Charles Manson mode. Uh, in a compound and has restraining orders from multiple women or girls who were allegedly groomed by him um, when they were underage and yet there is no shortage of problems surrounding him. Amber Heard just got uh, just lost her court case to Johnny Depp and was, um, was pro- it's not convicted it's proven to have defamed Johnny Depp um, when she released her allegations against him publicly so both of those things are not great for DC because those are their movies next year. Are Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom in March and then The Flash in July. So they can't really bring those out and showcase those movies and then they can't be expected to bring out Ezra Miller and, um, and uh, Amber Heard and have them trot up on stage and answer Q&A questions because it would just be awkward. Um, and then on top of that, they do have one other movie that has finished shooting but is not like it's still in post-production but we don't know where that's going. Um, and that movie is Batgirl, because Batgirl is done shooting, and it's in post-production. It was originally intended to be an HBO Max movie, but since Discovery has taken over Warner Brothers, Discovery doesn't want to go to HBO Max. So where does that go? What do we do with this movie now? And that's the big question. Um, so all they could really do is go out and showcase Shazam and Black Adam, which are coming out this year. And that they did. They showed a new trailer for Shazam, Fury of the Gods. It's their first trailer. It doesn't show you too much. And I think that the biggest problem with this trailer is that it's not likely to change any minds. It's not likely to make anyone who didn't see Shazam go, oh, I should watch Shazam. And Shazam only pulled like $500 million, maybe $600 million at the box office. And if we're hoping for a Shazam 3 or a Shazam versus Black Adam, they're going to be banking on Black Adam pulling the money, not Shazam. It's also strange to me that Shazam is going to be featuring the Greek gods, and the CinemaCon footage showed that Gal Gadot was in the movie, but she does not appear in this trailer. Maybe they're holding it for a trailer closer to release, but it it seems like an odd choice to not lead with that, especially when you're going to use footage of Aquaman from Aquaman, you're going to use footage of Batman from Justice League, you're going to use footage of... Um, the Flash, also from Justice League, especially considering you're, of the three you're using, you're using the Ezra Miller footage first. That was a really odd choice to me. And it's also an odd choice that they're not pushing this movie back another two weeks, so that way they can have a little bit wider berth around uh, um, Avatar Way of Water. Um, on the other hand, Black Adam 
is going to mark a return for Viola Davis as Amanda Waller, which would be more significant if it weren't for Peacemaker, um, having just had her in it. And I feel like the, the like people went into it expecting that Henry Cavill would be there, and then he wasn't. And then the trailer ends with him beating the fuck out of Hawkman. Like, all right, cool. He can beat the fuck out of Hawkman. He, Hawkman is not exactly a threat, so good for him. And DC also introduced a new show to introduce uh, DC characters to younger audiences called Bat Wheels, which is going to be a Cars-esque animated show about the vehicles of the DC universe. So that's kind of cute. Um, then came Marvel. And oh, came Marvel. And then so came everyone else when they saw what Marvel had to bring. Because here's the thing about Marvel. Um, Disney has two major days every year that they can show up to and not have anything else art competing with it. So let's start out with, like, like that's, that's, I think, the problem. Where it's like, they, can, they could have gone to D23 and did this and not had any competition. They could have gone to Investor Day in November, which is Disney Plus Day, and done this and not had any competition. Um, well, Disney Plus Day and Investor Day is kind of the same thing, which is what they did when they announced a lot of the stuff in the first place. Um, but that's where they could have done. Um, but no, they came to San Diego Comic-Con and laid their dick on the table and said, go ahead, look at it. And what we have here, and th that was not in the article I wrote for the professional news source, that is me editorializing, so keep it to yourself. Now, the two things of note out of the game. Um, number one, they split into two separate panels. On Friday, when I was seeing Nope, they were doing a panel for animation. Um, and on Saturday, while I was sitting on my couch, they were doing a panel for, um, what's it called? They were doing a panel for um, the live action. The last time they did a thing like this, it was 2019, when they did, um, what was it? They did San Diego Comic-Con, when they announced the Phase 4 slate. Um, here, they went deeper. They announced Phase 5. They announced Phase 6. They announced four release dates for Phase 7. So strap the fuck in, have we got news. Let's start with the animation first, though. Uh, this year, we have I Am Groot, which is going to be coming out on August 10th. That is a ambiguously canon Guardians of the Galaxy spinoff show about baby Groot. Um, that you, if you have seen an ad for Wonderful Pistachios, you have seen an ad for it. Uh, it's an anthology series that features Vin Diesel and Bradley Cooper reprising his Groot and Rocket Raccoon. And here's my thing. It's animated in, the, like, if we consider this animated, if we watch this show and we consider this animated, then The Lion King is also an animated movie. I'm sorry, but that's the case. That is how this works. Because it is the same photorealistic animation that we saw there. Um, it's just they're aliens. And, and, I mean, Rocket looks like a raccoon, but he's still an alien. Um... And it will be released in its entirety all at once, similar to how Baymax was. And it will be released piece by piece in the, in every, in the way they do everything else. Uh, for 2023, What If Season 2 has been delayed into 2023. And it will be more of what people liked about the first season. Maybe not me, but other people liked. Um, of note, the episode that was cut from Season 1 about Gamora and Tony Stark on Sakaar will be in this season as well as an episode of a fight between Captain America and Thanos, a fight between Odin and the Mandarin, a sequel to the aforementioned Gamora episode, and many more. Of note also is that replacing the Zombies episode is an adaptation of Marvel 1602, written by Neil Gaiman. So that could be pretty cool. A full episode was shown, called, uh, and that is the episode of What If Captain Carter Fought the Hydra Stomper, which is its adaptation of The Winter Soldier, which was kind of teased in the finale of season one. Um, later in 2023 marks the return of X-Men in cartoon form with X-Men 97. There'll be a direct sequel to the original show and pick up with Professor X having left the Earth to fight the Shi'ar Empire and Magneto taking control of the team. Joining the original cast are Bishop, Morph, Cable, Forge, Sunspot, and Nightcrawler, while Emma Frost, Mr. Sinister, Callisto, and Sebastian Stahl, Shaw will appear as villains. There'll be a blend of original and... Uh, new cast members voicing the various characters. Uh, 2024 has two animated shows, Marvel Zombies and Spider-Man Freshman Year. Marvel Zombies is a TVMA-rated spin-off of What If, centered around the zombie universe, with a team of survivors um, that will consist of Death Dealer from Shang-Chi, or Shang-Chi, Red Guardian from Black Widow, Black Widow, uh, Yelena's Black Widow, that is, from, uh, from Black Widow as well, 
Hawkeye, being Kate Bishop as Hawkeye, Miss Marvel, and Shang-Chi himself. At some point in the show, we will see Icarus as a zombie, um, which at first I bumped into because I'm like, eh, how does that work? But then they showed the design, and I'm like, I'm in. I I I'll buy it. I like that. That looks cool. Um, meanwhile, Spider-Man freshman year will start to flesh out Peter Parker's story before meeting Tony Stark in Captain America Civil War, um, while also expanding out the more Spider-adjacent parts of the MCU. Charlie Cox will be reprising his role as Matt Murdock and Daredevil in the show, so get ready for that. And the show will also introduce Harry Osborn, Norman Osborn, Amelia's Cho, Lonnie Lincoln, who you may know as Tombstone, and Nico Minoru, Minoru uh, of The Runaways. Although, as of right now, there are no word on if Lyrica Okano will be reprising her role from the Hulu show, but she is going to be voicing the character in Midnight Suns, and they did bring back Anson Mount as Black Bolt. Um, for the, from the Inhuman show. So I would say if she wants to do it, they'll they'll let her do it. Um, this will also bring in MCU versions of Doc Ock, Scorpion, Chameleon, and Rhino. Um, so that will be pretty interesting to see how that works. Now, live action. Let's get into the live action good stuff. Um, so this year will be the end of Phase 4. Phase 4 will end with Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, and phases 4 through 6 will collectively be called the Multiverse Saga. So we'll have phases 1, 2, and 3 were the Infinity Saga. Phase 5 will pick off in February of next year with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and end with the Thunderbolts movie in 2025. While phase 6 will begin with Fantastic Four in 2025 and end with Avengers Secret Wars in 2025. Or 2024, 2025. That's what it is. Okay. So... A few more dates were announced, but there's a lot to get through before we get to all of that. So, let's start out with this year. To round out this year, there is a new trailer for She-Hulk, which comes on uh, August 17th. Um, She-Hulk uh, will be the lead in that show as it's kind of like a, a, a legal comedy. Um, she'll be dealing with Abomination um, and the Hulk and Titania and a bunch of other cool powered characters. Um, and... Matt Murdock will be in the show as well, with Charlie Cox surprising, um, it, as we saw in the trailer at the very end. So, let's go with that. Now, I said multiple times that Namor would not be in Black Panther Wakanda forever. I said it quite a few times, but for me, that was kind of like if you've ever played, uh, if you've ever done March Madness, and it's like, look, it happened once that a one seed lost to a 16 seed. And it's a safe bet to pick that the one seed will be the 16 seed. Um, but if you pick the 16 seed to win and you're wrong, you look like a jackass. But if you pick it and you win, you look like a genius. And there I was picking the 16 seed to beat the one, and sure enough, I look like a jackass. Because Namor is the bad guy in Wakanda Forever in a movie that will also introduce um, what uh, that will also introduce Ironheart, uh, and it'll deal with the death of T'Challa. Um, to kind of mirror real life um, with Chadwick Boseman. Um, phase 5. Um, Kevin Feige said there's a reason Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania starts out Phase 5, and Kang the Conqueror will be the bad guy in that movie, alongside MODOK as a villain. So get the fuck ready for that. Rumors indicate that MODOK um, in this movie will be um, Corey Stoll reprising from the first Ant-Man movie, but who knows if that's accurate. Um, footage shows indicates that Cassie Lang, who has been recast again with Catherine Newton in the lead role, will follow in her father's footsteps and suit of his stature. Um, then the next thing after that on Disney Plus is Secret Invasion, which is a Nick Fury-focused show about an invasion of evil scrolls from Captain Marvel that have been taking over people in key roles across the universe. It has been described as a tense and dark spy thriller, which served Marvel in the past very well when they did uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and, um, and, and Captain America, I'm going to be honest. Um, so, looking forward to that as well. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 comes to theaters on May 5th, 2023, and we'll dive into Rocket's backstory, introduce the High Evolutionary, show what happened to the 2014 version of Gamora that escaped during Endgame, and the Band of Ravagers that she now has, and also introduce Adam Warlock for the first time. So, that movie's doing everything. Summer 2023 has two Disney Plus shows, season two of Loki, which will continue to see what happened now that Can the Conqueror is kind of unleashed after Loki kind of fucked up everything in season one, and the first spinoff of Hawkeye, 
Echo, which Charlie Cox will be reprising his role as Daredevil alongside Vincent D'Onofrio as, well, as Wilson Fisk Kingpin. It is rumored that Jessica Jones will also appear in this show, and it is rumored that Wilson Fisk will begin a run for mayor. But who knows if that's accurate? That was not said at the panel. That is rumors that I've read online. Um, July 28th, 2023 is the release of the Marvel, so typically we miss Marvel left off. It serves as a sequel to 2019's Captain Marvel, and also bringing Monica Rambo into the fold. Fall 2023 will be the release of Disney Plus' Ironheart, following her debut in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The long-awaited reboot of Blade with Mahershala Ali as Blade will be released on November 3rd, 2023. And Catherine Hahn's WandaVision spinoff, Agatha Coven of Chaos, will arrive in winter into winter 2023 into 2024. That show was previously called House of Harkness when it was, arri- when it was announced at Disney Plus Day. Uh, it is interesting with the name change, considering we don't know where Wanda is after Multiverse of Madness, and we have characterized her magic as chaos. So let's see what that does. Uh, according to the calendar, there's still a release date open in 2024, in February 2024. Um, that is not yet assigned. Maybe that'll be Deadpool 3, but who knows. Spring 2024 will be the return of Daredevil with Charlie Cox reprising his role as Matt Murdock in Daredevil alongside Vincent D'Onofrio as Wilson Fisk and Kingpin in a show called Daredevil Born Again. And I put a little editorial here, no doubt, because Netflix canceled the show and now they're bringing, in, bringing it back. Uh, and now they're bringing it back because season three was kind of born again when they did that um, and see Spider-Man Homecoming if you see proof of passive-aggressive naming conventions that Marvel uses. Um, season, uh, May 3rd, 2024 is the release of Captain America New World Order, which will be Sam Wilson's first feature film as Captain America. Phase 5 will be rounded off with Thunderbolts on July 26, 2024, with a team of Marvel's anti-heroes and villains teaming up to do God knows what. We don't have a cast yet, but me personally, I'm hoping for Sam Rockwell to come back. I'll say it. We always do a little Rockwell. Phase 6 details are sparse, but what they did announce is big. It'll kick off on November 8th of 2024 with their reboot of Fantastic Four. No word on casting or directors, but this may be unveiled at D23. Two other movies were announced and dated, but other movies are still on the slate without any information. The first of these movies is Avengers The Kang Dynasty on May 2nd, 2025, and will be the first Avengers movie since 2019. Um, And then... On November 7th, 2025, is Avengers Secret Wars. I'm assuming this is a two-part event. And there are also dates reserved on February 14th, 2025, and July 25th, 2025, with no dates slated there. With no movie slated for those dates. Four dates were given in, in 2026, which are February, you know, the usual February, May, July, November. Again, with no movies given for those dates. Four other Disney Plus dates were also given in that time frame. So, they're going all in with the multiverse saga. They're they're going all in. And not only did they do this at a huge, you know, at, at, like, instead of doing it at their own event, they did it at San Diego Comic-Con, they obliterated the news cycle with this. They completely obliterated the news cycle with this. Marvel came to play, and Marvel destroyed the competition. Um, So, let's see what comes next. Let's see what's coming. I think the next thing that is... You know, like this that's going to be coming is going to be, um, uh, I mean, I am Groot. Um, let me see what else we have. Something else in May, in, in August, I thought, early August. Um, oh, Sandman is the next one. Sandman is the next one, but August is going to be packed. So I'm looking forward to all this stuff. So until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.